first of all, uh, I would like to pay my highest homage to the Triple Gym, the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha with my highest respect. And I would like to pay my respect to the most venerable Atimini Mang San, the president of the CBMS, the Cambodian Buddhist Monk Society, and also my respect to all venerable monks uh, who happen to watch this show, and especially the two, the most two venerable speakers on this uh, uh, auspicious occasions on the Visak Day. So here we have uh, the most venerable Dr. Yan Zeng Yiet and venerable uh, Secretary uh, Sam Chan Thi. Uh, I would like to begin with this uh, talk show by informing our viewers or listeners who might be watching this show that we are doing this version of English in the purpose of sharing the knowledge uh, of the Visak celebration uh, to the public, uh, to the non-speaker. So uh, please uh, forgive us if we committed any mistakes in terms of uh, English usage. So uh, we just trying to do uh, our part to share the teaching of the Buddha. So uh, now I want to start by informing uh, to the viewer that today we have two speakers, uh, Venerable Dr. Yan Zeng Yit and Venerable uh, Sam Jan Thi uh, to uh, be part of this speech to share the teaching and uh, most importantly, the events that happened during this uh, Visak celebration. So I wanted to start with uh, Venerable Dr. Yan Zeng Yit uh, on this uh, uh, auspicious occasion. Uh, we all know that Visak celebration is is a UN's day, and as well as the celebration of all of the Buddhist countries in the world. So, I would like to, uh, you to uh, to tell us briefly. So, what is Visak Day in a Buddhist uh, ceremony? So, could you please uh, help us to uh, deliver a brief meaning of Visak celebration in Buddhist? in Buddhism, so please, thank you. My deep respect to the Noble Triple Gem, to Venerable President, <clears throat> to all Venerable Monks, especially to the Venerable Mother Rector who has given me this opportunity to share my understanding and little knowledge of uh, on how the celebration of Isaac is carrying out in the Buddhist community. Uh, Vixak celebration is one of the biggest celebrations in uh, Buddhist world and this celebration <clears throat> is dedicated to three events which happening in the Buddha's life. Uh, one is uh, it <clears throat> celebrate the day that he was born into this world and the second one the day that the Buddha for the enlightenment under the bow tree. And the third one is the Mahaparinibbana, the demise of the Buddha. So this is the essence of the celebration of Isak uh, Puja in Buddhist community. Thank you. Thank you so much. So uh, I would like to turn this question to Venerable Samjati, but I want you to specifically describe what is Visak, you know, because mostly uh, people have different pronounce different terms of using this visa. So some some somebody uh, pronounces a visa kabusha, visa uh, or visa or so. Could you please uh, help us to understand why are so many different names on this uh, visa celebration? So please, thank you. Thank you very much. The, uh, first of all, I would like to pay deep respect to the most venerable uh, president, venerable Dr. Jan Sinjiet, venerable moderator, venerable uh, secretary and uh, editors and all to men vulnerable in the uh, Bodhisattva. And uh, uh, good evening to everyone also. Uh, the term Visak in, in originally Pali word, the Pali word Visak, it represents to the um, six man according to the um, lunar calendar. So in some texts, Especially the text written by the um, by the scholar uh, in uh, <laughs> something <laughs> in, in no. 
uh, written by the most scholar that the new research, they represent, especially for Mahayana Buddhism, they represent to the fourth, for the fourth month of a uh, calendar. It is Visakha. Visakha means the month that we uh, count in the uh, calendar, in, in, in uh, lunar calendar. And Visakha Puja, it is the, the celebration represent the full moons of that month. If we compare to the solar calendar, it affected May actually, but this month turned back to April. April. So it is a little bit um, different by, by year to year. So Visaka Puja, it means the, uh, the celebration regarding to the full moons of Visa. And it is different by the country by pronunciation. Like in Cambodia, we, we call Visaka Bojie because our pronunciation, our term of Bali word uh, uh, Otran is different from other. Thailand, we call Visaka Pucha because they don't have uh, alphabet like J. And Lanka, uh, Sri Lanka, they call Vesak, Vesak, like uh, because they represent like a uh, uh, mixed. Uh, Europeans and Sri Lankan language together, and some other country they call Vaisaka. It is a represent to their pronunciation only. Thank you. Thank, thank you. So uh, significantly, uh, Vaisak is the the month uh, in the lunar calendar, uh, which is uh, happen on the full moon of the uh, sixth uh, month of uh, which, uh, basically is the name of the month, uh, and and this uh, so. Uh, because of the events uh, of the Buddha, which is the birth, the enlightenment, and the Maha Parinibbana, or in Sanskrit, we pronounce it as Nibbana. So I'm going to ask you, uh, both of you, to describe uh, each and uh, each of these uh, three events. So uh, because uh, it is quite significant and uh, it's very important for for all Buddhist uh, practitioners or Buddhist followers to understand uh, on these three events. So I would like to turn the question to Venerable Dr. Yon Seng Yed on, on, on the birth of the Buddha. So what is so significant about the birth of the Buddha? How can uh, Buddhist followers uh, understand the event of the birth of the Buddha and, and, and learn something from, from, from this uh, event? Of the Buddha, so could you please help us to uh, describe a little bit, and then I will be exchanging with Minimal Doctor Alpha with Minimal Samkenti, so we can share uh, a different views. Because I know there is a lot of uh, of, of understanding regarding to this uh, uh, event. So could you please, uh, Minimal Doctor Samkenti, yet share with us your perspective? Thank you. The noble birth of the Sakyamuni Buddha signify the arrival of the expression of the thought. Uh, we have to re we have to accept that the Buddha is not the, was not the first religious founder who came who came to into this world, but he's, he he was one of the I think in those days in the sixth century BC Buddha was was the first religious founder who accept who recognized the value of the expression of the thought in the Jibuti, but which is known as we, we is um, in modern Indian subcontinent, and uh, his birth has given a full freedom uh, to the human to the human world by uh, accepting, recognizing that all beings are equal. So there is the colors, the race, the families. Uh, are not the basic uh, qualification that human being has to be uh, different or put in different categories. So the the teaching. Hello, can you hear me, sir? Yes, yes, yes. Please, please keep going. Yeah. Because there is something is going on in Cambodia now. Oh, yes, Electricity is just on and off and on and off. And if something wrong with me and I uh, disappear from the screen, please. <laughs> carry on. <laughs> yes, yes um, thank you. Yes, please, yeah. And uh, 
the he was the first religious founder who asked his followers to uh, who, who asked his followers to to have a dialogue with me in order to accept his teaching. Just in one case, when he taught Venerable Sariputra and he asked Venerable Sariputra, uh, do you agree with what I say? And then when Venerable Sariputra say, no, Lord, I have to think it over again and again. And then the Buddha say, uh, Sariputra is a great disciple because he did not accept what I said instantly without considering. So this is the first sign of the uh, the, the teachings that we carry on in his life. So his birth signified the, the, the importance of the value of the freedom expression. And when we start to practice Buddhism deeply, we can see that we have more freedom because the Buddha is not the external beings or a divine or uh, a god or at all, he is human beings. So by the human capacity, he teaches the world with all the qualities, which all the mind capacity had been found in every each and every human beings. So this is what we have practiced and we learn in Buddhism. So his birth signified the importance of the the, the day that human being can express fully from what he had in mind and souls. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, uh, so I would like to get a different dimensions of this, uh, uh, of the Buddha's birth views on, on uh, this event. So I would like to turn the question to Venerable uh, uh, Samyan T. Sorry. So why is the birth of uh, the Buddha is uh, so, so significant for uh, Buddhist followers and for, uh, uh, for in general for, for human beings. And at the same time, uh, we all know that the Buddha was born as a prince in, 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 the, in the royal family. And uh, because many of us as a human being, we are, we are struggling, we are striving for a better life, a better position, a better uh, rank in humanity, but the Buddha was born as a prince. And why did he, you know, basically, why did he abandon his palace and and his uh, you know luxurious life to seek for uh, a struggling life to attain the, uh, the, the, the 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 enlightenment? So, so could you please help us get some different views on on this? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, the day that the Buddha born. The presence of the Buddha is like opening the new era, the new calendar for uh, universal, for the uh, for universal, universal beings. So, as you know, even though we are born in the such a form, uh, normal family, so if we know that our our family, our relative have uh, pregnant pregnancy so we are waiting to 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 the to kid or to a uh, fetus to be born we are waiting with some somebody said that i cannot i can wait to see my beautiful cousin beautiful son beautiful daughter or something it is just only the simple one but the presence of the buddha or satarma as a tarster so it is waiting for a long, long period. As, as you, you study on the Buddha's biography, before Buddha come to the world, to the womb his, of, of his mother, so the uncountable events of, um, of Deva, Brahma, and human being discussing and waiting about the presence of Buddha. The Buddha will come one day. So, and then the day of the Buddha, of the Siddhartha princess born, many uncountable uh, uh, cycles of the world of Devas and Brahma come together and respect, respect the princess. So this is their joy. And they know exactly that the bonds of princess will bring the happiness to everyone. That's why 
they name start or start to bring joy and 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 happy to others. And because of his is born, is present, represent to others successful, to change the world, change the caste system in India, or change to the uh, wrong views of uh, living beings. He changed everything at uh, in the presence of his uh, yeah his in the world. So especially there are thirty two miracle events happening the day that he was born. But uh, to the question that you add, why he born as princess in a luxurious palace and he left palace searching moksha, search, uh, searching the liberation. In Parijesana Sutta in Majimanikaya, Buddha himself discussed why I uh, abandoned the palace. Because there are two um, searching, wrong searching and right searching. If someone think that I am have I am usually faced with with uh, old age, with decay, with death, with separation, with suffer. So why I find something that add more suffer to me? This is wrong, wrong finding, wrong searching, searching. So the Buddha search in the right way. I am usually affected by old age, by decay, by death, or by many suffering, lamentation. So I need to abandon all of these things and search what is happiness, what is free from all suffering. So that's why the uh, princess Tartha left the palace searching the truth. When he, and when he found truth, he come back to the to palace and give this joy, the real joy. When he born, it's just only the representations of joy of all living beings. Just only, just only fake joy. We, we can say fake joy, but it's not fake, but it's just only representation, representative to, uh, uh, joy to all living beings. But when the Buddha enlightened, he brings the real joy, the real happiness to his family and world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, so yeah, the, the first part, we, we, we get some sense of the the, Buddha, the birth of the Buddha. So, but I, as, as we all know that we have a lot, uh, a lot of uh, description, a lot of uh, uh, things in the sutras that can describe the, the, the birth of the Buddha, but we cannot go all into the details. So I will be leaving it there. For those who are, for those who are uh, interested in searching more knowledge on this, uh, they can go through on the Tibetica or some other documentary that related to the Buddhas. And so now let me turn into uh, the Enlightenment uh, event. So, uh, when what Dr. Yan Sing did, I uh, would like to turn this into you, uh, to you to ask on, you know, because uh, as the, the, when what Dr. Uh, Neuro Samuel T has mentioned, that because it is not the real happiness in the palace, that's why the Buddha's left and searching for uh, the real happiness. So, so then he get enlightenment. So my question to you is that, Dr. Yuan Sing Yit, is what did, uh, what Dharma did the Buddha get enlightenment? So could you please uh, briefly share, uh, share with us? And and this question will be also uh, asked to uh, uh, Venerable uh, Sam Yanti too. So could you please, one, uh, Dr. Yuan Sing Yit, please? Thank you. The Dharma or the teaching that he had found on the day that he got enlightenment was the Four Noble Truths, which is the formula to understand the sufferings and the cessation of the sufferings, the marga, the path, and the liberation of the suffering. So these are the main teachings of the Buddha, because inside this teaching, we don't see anything which is relevant to the external beings, the invisible beings, or whatever it is, it is all lies in the heart, in the mind, in the life of the human beings. So this was the first teaching which had been taught by the religious founder in the 6th century BC to work towards their own liberation by themselves, not with the help of the divinity, 
but with the help of their own, with with uh, with the effort of the the uh, of themselves. So this is the teaching. Basically, we call it the four noble truth: dukkha, samudaya, uh, nirodha, and marga. Thank you. Thank you so much. So yes, I would like to turn the question to Venerable well, Samyati. You know, when we're talking about the four noble truths, uh, as Venerable well, Dr. Yanti has mentioned, the suffering. So suffering has been there before the Buddha was get uh, uh, get enlightenment. So why why is uh, the Buddha's finding is so significant than any other's finding? Because you know we all as human beings has experienced suffering before the Buddha got enlightenment. So can, can, you, can you give us a sense of differences of the Buddha's teaching and, and, and uh, with, uh, with, the, with the suffering, the notion of suffering that, that uh, others uh, have in the ideas of the suffering. So could you please uh, share with us? Thank, Thank you. you. Um, actually, uh, when Venerable Doctor have mentioned, or has mentioned already about uh, the Dhamma that the Buddha enlightened, I, I, I can come uh, I can merge that teach, uh, that enlightened Dhamma it mean the Buddha found at the roots of Bodhi tree it related the four noble truth with the um, the cycles of Parijasmupat it means the cause and effect theory so the Buddha find cause and effect so regarding to suffering suffering would not just only reconflect again and again, back and forth, through the Pradicca Samuprata, Avijja Sankara, Sankara Pajya Vinyana, etc. Through, through this recollection, he found, he found the truth. Regarding to this suffering, he not find anything, but he just accepted, he just realized it is true. He just, he just notified that it is, it is true. Nobody can change because we suffer a lot because of birth, because of decay, because of uh, old age, because of death or something. We suffer a lot. Why we suffer? Can we change that suffer? We cannot change that suffer, but we accept that offer and we limit. We don't want to affect anymore with this suffer. So for suffering is not to abandon, it's not to cultivate, it's not to uh, observe, but you have to, um, you have to notify, you have to understand, you have to understand that this is suffering. The Buddha said, this, oh, now I understand the Dhamma that before I have never known, I have never clear before that this is suffering. So this suffering is the truth. Nobody can change this suffering, but we can cut it by practicing, by understanding and by abandoning the cause of that suffering. So to realize the, the, the suffering, it means just to notify, to understand it. It is real, not suffer because of what suffer thing. The thing, it is already suffer, why we suffer more? Example, the separation from our beloved one. It is, it is the real of suffering and why we, are, we more suffer about that. We suffer more about that. So we just understand the reality it is just only the continuous of causation. If you have birth, you have suffered. If you have, because of birth, you have suffered. And because of uh, existence, you have birth. And because of grasping, you have, uh, you have, uh, existent because of tanha or craving, you have um, grasping because of feeling, you have uh, uh, tanha or craving, etc. So when we uh, we reflect on our on our, uh, on these cycles of the religious mupata, we will understand the truth, understand the suffer uh, suffering. It is real and truth. Nobody can change, but we have more practice to abandon the 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 cause of that suffering. Yeah. 
thank thank you so much. So yeah, but, uh, of course, it is a lot of uh, uh, details in this uh, event, the, the Buddha enlightenment. But we cannot go through all. I think I hope that the, pe the people who are watching this get a sense of uh, the meaning of enlightenment, which is uh, the solution uh, that can help us to overcome the sufferings. And the Buddha found it. Uh, that's why he's enlightened and share with the. Um, his followers and the world. So uh, now I would like to go into the third event, uh, which is the Maha Parinibbana. Uh, when I was Dr. Yan saying, yeah, uh, you know, the Buddha's got enlightenment. Is he he consider we consider him as a you no, know, not just we, but the people in the town consider him as a superior being, and because he can decided not uh, to go away. He can, he, either he can decide to go away or he can still remain until today. But uh, I would like to ask you on that uh, meaning. Uh, the, but first I would like to start with the, the, the terms of Nivarana and or Nibbana, which is the, the Pali and Sanskrit. So first, could you please tell us what is the meaning of those terms? And, and then why the Buddha decided to leave the world after he got enlightenment, which is he can decide not to, to leave. Uh, so can you share with us with a sense of uh, his uh, decision on on departed from uh, this world? But first, uh, I would like to know the, the terms the Nibbana or Nivara. Uh, what does it mean? Can you please share? Thank you. Can you? Well, sir, I cannot hear you clearly, so I cannot touch up with the question. Please pass this question to whatever Simon Tisa. Yes, Simon Tisa. Uh, Simon please. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I can you. share with us the terms. Yeah, the terms of the Nibbana or Nibbana. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, yeah, the term Nibbana or Nirvana, um, it is the Pali word or Sanskrit word. It, uh, it came from the root Ni and Vana. Ni, it, it, it means to, to get away. And vana is the kinds of grass. That, that, uh, the, the meaning of vana is grass. Yeah, like kusa grass, the grass that the Buddha take from uh, Brahmin before he in uh, he enlightenment. But uh, nirvana means to get away of all the disturbances. What, is the, what are the disturbances? disturbances from hatred, from greed, from delusion. So Nibbana means to cease of all these disturbances, defilement, yeah, defilement. So the term Nibbana is the freedom or um, uh, free from all uh, lobha, it means to create or those are hatred and uh, moha delusion that disturb us because when you have when you have disturbances, you cannot feel uh, happily. The Buddha in uh, Jola Bodhisut, uh, Jola Tundila Chartuga mentioned that um, Baba or, or this kind of disturbances compared to the sweet, you know, sweet, right? The sweet that when we when we uh, walking under the, uh, the sun and or we work hard and then we sweat. So yeah. when, when we sweat, we cannot we cannot sit happily we cannot sleep happily we cannot uh, communicate happily right it, it is like disturbed so you have to you have to best and you have to best and then you uh, apply lotion to your body then you feel uh, you feel relaxed you feel happy and you feel enjoy and joyful and love yourself very much so in buddhism buddha said that dham dhammo rahato akattamo so the Dhamma or Nirvana is like a, a, a very, very uh, good pond that clear water, no mud in the pond, and we can go in and bathe. bathe. And the disturbance of Lopa, Dosa, and Moha is like a sweat. So we have to remove all the sweat and we have to apply the lotion. And what are the lotion? Silang Vilipanang Setang. So morality. The practice is the good lotion for all living beings. So absence of 
this this disturbance is called nirvana. It is the term nirvana. And you asked uh, another question related to the uh, why the Buddha decided to live, why um, why he 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 didn't want to stay with us. Uh, many people um, misunderstood of uh, this term. The term that Mara come the or ever do or come to um, uh, approach to the Buddha and ask him to attend Nirvana. And the Buddha said to Ananda, if uh, somebody who are qualified with Itipada, for Itipada or for foundations of a successful, um, want to stay, he can stay uh, as, uh, as the world age or, or um, more than that something like that. But don't misunderstand it. Uh, that means if the Buddha want to stay, he stay maximum 120 years only, not until today. Because he said, the Kappa Ayu, Kappa Ayu mean the age of the, of age of the, of the lifetime, lifespan, lifespan, you know, a lifespan, because at that time, at the Buddha's time, lifespan is 100 years, the lifespan. So it is can more, more than that lifespan only 20 years or 40 years maximum. And now the lifespan is just only 74 and a half. In America, the lifespan of American people is 80 and 81. The lifespan of Jap Japanese people is uh, 76. The lifespan, lifespan of Cambodian is 65, between 65 and 70. And lifespan of other country in uh, other people in uh, Africa country at some time, some country is only 45. So it is lifespan because uh, uh, according to the, the uh, scientific research, so they, they, they do a research like that. So we call lifespan. So if the Buddha want to stay until the lifespan or more than lifespan, only 100 or more than 100 years. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, because you know, uh, when we talk in our language or in some of the language, they also mention about it that Buddha could uh, be here as long as he, he wish. If he, if it is no Mara or yeah. or, or anything that uh, that forced him to, but uh, so the fact is that we have a wrong understanding on this. So thank you for clearing. And uh, when about Dr. Yang Singh, I, I would like you to, uh, to to share some view on the last event. So what do you make of Nibbana? Why, why, why is it so significant uh, to all of us at the Buddhist court, all of us? Because Buddha can can do some kind of super things, uh, but why he decided to uh, to leave the world. So what is your perspective on this? Can you share with us? Thank you. Uh, the Buddha was very old. One day he told Venerable Ananda, he said, my body is like a very old cow's ox. It's very old. He said, I'm very old. This is very clearly that the Buddha sent a message to the followers that he's old physically, very old. That is the nature of the human beings because he clearly uh, said that anything is arising is subject to the uh, falling, born and death. Without, without, uh, without birth, there is no death. So this is the reality. And uh, what I... <clears throat> uh, what I am interested in the demise, the Mahaparinibbana of the Buddha was, even though just before the last minute of his final goodbye to the world, he, 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 he asked the monk not to be heedfulness, not to be heedful. It has, one has to work very hard for the liberation, not only liberation, I think for all walks of life, either we are, lay people or monks, one have to perform the duties as much as possible righteously. So this is the, the clear message that the Buddha from the beginning of the first day of his enlightenment 
until the last minute of his departure, he, he was thinking of how to help the world. Just a few, we say just a few minutes before he say goodbye, he asked, is there anyone want to ask any question because it's time for me to go. And if you have any question, please ask. And he also say, uh, one should not be head full. Meaning that one have to be mindful. That's why in Mahaparinibbana, we can see the teaching of the Satipatthana, the mindfulness, the four foundation of the practice, which is very popular uh, uh, practice in the West. Uh, not in the East anymore. I, I feel very sorry to see this thing happen in our Eastern world that we have been practicing Buddhism for thousands of years. But the practice of Satipatthana and the meditation seems is on the decline these days, not only in Cambodia, in many countries, in the East, not in the West. I still recall the site that I see while I was at Harvard University. There were around 30 meditation centers located around the university, uh, which is very amazing to see that the non-Buddhist country practice meditation, even though much better than the Buddhist country <laughs> in the East. So the, the Mahaparinibbana Sutta of the Buddha, uh, we can learn from his death. And sometimes it is funny to see the, uh, the, to see the human beings really want the Buddha to, to live the whole, the forever. It, it's impossible, that's not true. Because he said that, uh, when after my departure, my demise, uh, my teachings, my vinaya, my dharma is your master. So this is very clearly uh, teaching where the, what they say, the final say of the Buddha, practice my teaching. That is what the great respect that you can give to me. So this is the thing that we can learn from uh, each other, uh, from, sorry, we can learn from the, the uh, the demise of the Buddha. And we as a Buddhist must understand we are not going against the law of the nature, but we try to live, to sail through the, the, the law of nature. We, are, we were born, we are living our life, and we have to accept that that is, is ahead of us. So this is the basic teaching of the Buddha. Live according to the nature, Oh, sorry, Liu, according to the law of the nature. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much uh, I, for, for sharing with us. The reason I ask about the departed of the Buddha, because many of us, uh, when we get old, we complain, and, and many rich people, many people who have ability to, to boost up their body, I mean, they kind of trying to get some a surgery or using that uh, medical science to to keep them young, look younger. But the fact is that we are all <laughs> going to get uh, deteriorated in our body. We are getting old as its nature. So uh, to remind us all. So uh, I would like to summarize this by uh, allowing you both uh, to share with us what should we remember, what should be we suck the remembrance be remembered by the, his followers and the people. So I uh, shortly, in the one or two minutes, please, each of you, uh, when was the second first, please. Thank you. Thank you very much for the last <laughs> chance to talk. As Venerable Dr. Young said, I just want to, uh, to, uh, to, come, uh, to add to your end and to say that, um, Mindfulness is no more in the Eastern world. You know, how, how many so that, uh, that the Buddha uh, uh, delivered in the Northern India? There's only few, Satipatthana Sutta and, uh, and, uh, uh, and Aratapala Sutra. So only, only few Sutta, so it's just only joke. Um, mindfulness is for Northern people, it's not Eastern people. <laughs> <laughs> it is just only short. Um, uh, for the reminding to Visakha, um, as the final words of the Buddhas, we have to um, work out our deliverance 
with earnestness. It means we have to learn hard, we have to practice, and we have to share our knowledge to others in order to work together to make the progress. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sir so, Wanbe. Dr. Yang, what is your last word on this uh, Visaka Day? Thank you. Visaka celebration should be the song of the practice of Sila, Sumati, and Pranya. Sila uh, is very important for the society to exist because it's a basic principle, and Samadhi is a teaching which can help us to cultivate, to purify, to, to purify our mind. And the wisdom, the Panya, is the source of leading our life to happiness. So Visakha should be the source of inspiration and aspiration for all the people, not only for Buddhists. I quote the statement of the former, the former General Secretary of UN, uh, he said that the teaching of the Buddha, uh, the, uh, the teaching of the Buddha allow us to impress, to embrace each other with love and compassion. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for both venerable for sharing your uh, essential knowledge on uh, this event. And I hope that uh, this program, this talk show for English uh, would be benefited for all of the people who might not be understand our language, but of course this short period of time is not enough to describe the whole event because we have a lot of teachings within this event. So I hope that all understand and please uh, forgive me for any mistakes uh, for both of our three of us, because we are not perfect, we are imperfect, and we are uh, we are trying to make uh, we are trying to do it better. So uh, please forgive us. And uh, this, I would like to yield back and thank you for watching. And may all being may all sentient beings be free from suffering. And uh, once again, thank you for for both venerables and uh, thank you for the venerable president for still uh, being with us here. And uh, I would like to yield back and turn this program to venerable. Non-sedat, please. Thank you.